Hey folks, this is Vince with Dad's Gaming Addiction, and today we're going to quickly check out Dave the Diver. This is a game that you can find on Steam for about 20 bucks. So this is a game that I just got a press key for today, and I plan to play it for a little bit just to try it out. Three hours later, <laughs> I just, yeah, I looked up and I'm like, oh my god, I gotta cook dinner. So Dave the Diver is one of those games where you'll be sort of drawn into it, and before you know it, a bunch of time will pass. You will be sort of like spear fishing during the day and opening your own little sushi bar at night. During the day on the boat, you'll be able to access your phone, which has a number of different apps. You can get weapons and unlock new weapons that way. You'll be able to upgrade the things on your suit. So if you want more oxygen, if you want a larger backpack, if you want a better diving suit or a harpoon gun, you can spend the money that you're earning during your sushi hours, your sushi bar hours, and spend them on your phone. Now, the phone app will also trap some other things or track some other things. Cook stuff, for example, is an app. The better that you do in your sushi restaurant, the more things that you unlock. So long story short, go into the water, spear some fish, come up and then run your restaurant bar or whatever it is at night. That That's the general gameplay flow. And I will admit it is a little addicting, but at the same time, it's very monotonous. It's very samey. You get about three or so dives during the daytime. So when you start running out of oxygen, you'll have to go back up. Now, each of these runs, and I'm going to call them runs because they feel like a roguelike in the sense that you will find weapon upgrades for the equipment that you have on you, even like Oxygen canisters, they're like one-time consumables. Sometimes you'll get like a little, um, like a, I don't know what they're called, like a little diver thing. It, it's a little diver machine that just sort of makes you go faster. I don't remember what they're called. Like the Navy SEALs use them. Anyway, these are like things that you'll have access to during that run. But whenever you're done and you go back up to the surface, all of those cool upgrades and consumables that you found are gone. You will keep the, the fish that you speared, you'll keep the materials that you find on the ocean floor, like glass or uh, metal, different things like that, um, various trinkets. But when it comes to like equipment, all of that stuff is left behind. So that's why I said like each run is kind of like a rogue light in the sense that, you know, there is there is progression. But you're going to be starting over with every new dive. But again, you can unlock new weapons via the boat, craft new things, that kind of thing, and bring them with you for your next underwater run. These underwater runs appear to be procedurally generated in the sense that you will see things in different locations. Like I'm, I'm noticing like the same pattern in the way the level is designed, but then there'll be a crate here where there wasn't before in this particular run, that kind of thing. Um, spearfishing is fairly simple with a caveat to that. You right click to hold your harpoon and you aim and then you shoot. Whenever you spear a fish, it depends on how difficult it is to actually reel it in. If it's very difficult, the line will break and it'll run away. I think you have to like upgrade your spear gun to catch some of these more advanced fish. Uh, if you spear it enough, you'll do enough sort of damage to it to weaken it and then you'll be able to reel it in. And this is the part that I don't like. With those very difficult fish, depending on your gear level of course, you will be treated with this mini game. There's two things I hate about it. One, there's screen shake. It makes me extremely dizzy and I hate it and there's no way to turn it off in the options menu. B, it's a mini game, and this mini game will sometimes change. Sometimes you have to smash on the E key. Sometimes you have to hit keys in order like WW or WD or SA, or maybe you have to spam A and D really fast. Like, I hate little mini games like that. Especially if it were the same mini game, that's fine. But with different fish, there are different mini games, and it's just annoying. Now, if you don't want to deal with the spear fishing aspect, you can just shoot them. Um, whenever you bring a weapon with you underwater, it has limited ammo unless you find more ammo in the environment. And when you kill them, you can still like take their corpse, but you won't get as good of a loot 
out of it. Like there's like one star fish, two star fish, three star fish. If the fish that you would have captured with your harpoon gun is two star, but you kill it, uh, you'll get like a one star fish out of it. And that will affect like price and other things when you do end up bringing it back. So like I said, this this section of the game is a little monotonous. I, I like the exploration aspect of it. There are a lot of like main quests and story quests. This game is actually very quest heavy, very narrative, very cutscene heavy. Every time I turn around, people are talking, 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 talking. So like, I feel like this is part RPG in the sense that like, even though I don't have like a head slot and a chest slot and all this other stuff to equip stuff to my character to, people are constantly talking when I'm completing mission objectives. So like, that's annoying to me. I'd rather just skip past all of that and hit play. And some of those scenes are unskippable. I just want to grind out loot. I want to grind out fish and manage a business. I, I, I have a passing interest in the story, but not really. Um, different enemies will appear the further down you go. There's like two different sections that I've unlocked so far. There's like the top area and then there's like the middle area. You have to upgrade your suit in, in, in order to handle the more difficult depths. So, yeah, there's there's a progression system in this game. What I don't like is that, like, I, I found these upgrades to my harpoon gun during a run, like a poison harpoon. Whenever you spear something and it survives and you don't capture it, it poisons them and they, it does damage to them over time. I really like that. But again, after it was all said and done and I went back up to the surface, I lost it. So, like, I, I hate the fact that there is a rogue-like element to each run. I, I wish I could keep all the cool things that I'm finding. Again, you're keeping the, the loot. Uh, it's just like the equipment stuff. I just wish I could have kept some of that. I, I, I would have loved to have, you know, done something with these items that I'm bringing back. I, I had an extra O2 canister that I had in my inventory. Do I get any credit for it? Probably not. Probably not. I don't get to. I don't get to bring it with me for the next run, which is kind of silly. So I, I hate that the game resets your progress in a way. Um, but yeah, the fish that you gather and the parts that you gather, all of that will remain with your inventory. There is other things that you'll find along the ocean floor. Um, for example, there's an escape pod. If you start running out of oxygen, you can call upon that thing. It takes a little bit of time to do it. But once you do call it down, it'll instantly retrieve you without you having to go back to the surface, which is super, super helpful. So that's cool. Uh, you also have a melee weapon. Uh, you start off with a knife, but sometimes you'll find a baseball bat or a hammer that puts fish to sleep. Again, you lose that, unfortunately, when you go back up to the surface and you start with your knife again on your next run. But still, um, I, 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 I like and dislike the repetition and um, the semi-lack of progression there. But the part that I do like is you will be gaining these fish. And at night, you are forced to then go into your... I'm going to call it a sushi bar. It's probably like some kind of restaurant. I don't know what it is. But anyway, you're going to be, every night, selling fish to your customers. You add it to a menu. And in between doing that, you'll be able to unlock new recipes. You'll gain these like artisan flame points and that unlocks new recipes, which is good. You want to unlock a lot of recipes um, that will require like this type of fish and then maybe salt or maybe a shark head and olive oil, something like that. And these things will sell for a lot of money, which is great. You'll find like a little encyclopedia of all the different ingredients that you can get. There is a menu. Um, the menu isn't that straightforward, to be honest with you. Like with the menu, I am able to add fish to the menu, like four or five at a time. And anything extra that you do not sell that night gets thrown away and goes to waste. So I feel like... I only add like one or two fish of each type to the menu so that there are no leftovers by the time night hits. You can access the menu midnight and re-add things if you need to. It's just very cumbersome. I, I wish the menu, uh, the menu and the UI were a bit better at night. There's also, uh, it's, it's, it's not, it's kind of like Diner Dash. You've got a cook doing everything for you. All you got to do is pick up the food and deliver it. On occasion, people will demand tea. You fill up their cup and they will pay more for 
their food than they normally would. But you're going to be running back and forth, left and right, delivering food. Yes, you will eventually be able to hire kitchen staff and dining room staff to help you out. Kitchen staff will make the, the cooking of the food faster. The dining staff will deliver plates for you, which is nice. But like the night goes by very quickly. And like I said, if you do not sell everything on your menu, it will go to waste. So I don't like that part of it. Like I, I wish the menu management were a bit easier and I didn't have to worry about things so much. One thing I do like about the menu stuff is that let's say you have 15 of this type of fish. Well, you can actually upgrade them. Um, every time you spend, say, three of this fish, it will upgrade that fish recipe for, you know, from level one to level two or level two to level three. And you'll end up bringing in more money for that particular dish. So if you end up spearing a bunch of food or a bunch of the same type of fish, you can then upgrade that dish to make it more powerful. And then by extension, you'll earn more money for putting it on your table. I like that aspect of it. At least I have something to do with all the extra fish that I'm spearing during uh, a particular run. There are so many cutscenes in this game, it's ridiculous and it drives me crazy. Um, I just, I, I wish I could turn them off in the options menu. <laughs> It's like the game is overly cutscene and talky talky heavy. Um, it's just annoying at times. But and anyway, do I recommend Dave the Diver? Yes, I I still recommend it. A, a couple of things annoy me, um, like trying to figure out the UI when it comes to the menu system, the screen shake option, not being able to turn that off. Um, you know, losing some equipment during the uh, fishing run. Uh, you know, they're, they're, those, those things annoy me a bit. But I do like the fact that you're spending money to upgrade a bunch of things, whether it be your, your bar or your, or your restaurant, rather, or your actual diver, making him better at fish, spear fishing during the day. The rest of it's fluff. This game seems to thrive on fluff. I don't mind that, but... On occasion, I can't skip it, and again, I just I just want to play the game. I don't want to watch some guy sprinkle salt on a fish. <laughs> you know what I mean? So uh, I, I'd say give this game a chance. It's not bad. It has overwhelmingly positive reviews on Steam right now, so that should say something. Well, this is Vince. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time. Take care.